Guys, I'm muted. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our seminar tonight. I hope you will enjoy it. It's child and youth evangelism. I hope that the IT guys is a pastor on already. Is, is the pastor on whoever's doing the IT is the pastor on? I don't see him, Millicent. Is it? Oh. So what must we do now? Because he's Nokia twenty please. Ayana Nokia twenty wants to say something. Mute himself. Knock your twenty, please unmute yourself and say.
Hi, and as a pass, not yet on. No, I'll, I'll play another song. Please, or unless you do the verse and opening prayer, but I hope he's, I don't know where he, he did forget or whatever. Must I pound him? I can check him for you. Oh, thank you, please. In the meantime, Frederick, are you unmuted? Then you can do the the the, the opening prayer and the verse so long. Uh, good evening, everyone. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Father, this evening we give you all the glory, the honor, the praise. You are exalted above you in heaven, dear Lord God. Thank you, Lord Father, that you have brought us this far during this day, that protected us and taken care of us. And we, keep, we thank thee for that, dear Lord God. We praise Heavenly Father that we can come together online uh, for lessons, Lord Father, that will help us to assist your children in growing in Christ. I pray, Lord God, that uh, as we go through these lessons, that you will help us to implement it within our lives and in our workplaces at our churches, Lord Father. I pray for the presenter, Heavenly Father, by your Holy Spirit guide, help him to assist in wording and in teaching of Father. I bless us further this evening. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the verse scripture reading this evening comes from Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's the reading. Amen. Thank you, Frederick. I really appreciate it. We're just waiting for the past. Ayanda was just busy checking on him. Ayanda, any response? Nothing. Find a strong the
Yeah, that's just helping me see it. Okay, because when I found him, he said he's, he's okay. So I'm not sure is he does he know how to get in or what. I'm trying, Millicent. I'm not getting hold of him. In the lock, Ayanda. Oh, 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 oh,
forget 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 Esa, <laughs> Um, uh, guys, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, so I think if I may ask that perhaps, um, because I'm not sure what's happening here. Can we maybe rather just come back um, at, at seven o'clock? so that I can try and find out what's happening with the pastor. Um, uh, because I'm going to waste your time here, I'm trying to wait and call, because I'm unfortunately not getting through. So I'm going to ask that maybe we come back at seven o'clock so that we can be able to continue with, with the seminar. And I would like to sincerely apologize for any inconvenience that has been caused uh, for the area coordinators and leaders, please do share, even if anyone, please, everybody who's here, there must be at least one person who shares in their group to indicate that we are coming back at seven o'clock so that the word can go quickly. Um, because us just calling here, uh, whether, whether unlimited or not, um, it's not going to help us. I need to find out what's happening with the pastor. Let's come back seven o'clock. See you at seven. And my apologies. We are going to see you at seven. Uh, we come back at seven o'clock. Let's go on. The
Uh, thank you very much, guys. Um, we are getting ready to start. Millicent, I think maybe if we can start with prayer again. Okay, can you unmute me just to pray again, please? Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, holy art thou. We give thee all the glory, the honor. We thank thee, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness and your mercy upon our lives. We pray, dear Lord God, as we go through this session, that you will help us to understand each lesson, Lord Father, that will apply to our lives, and that it will help us, Lord God, to reach out to those that need it, Lord Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we go through this, that we know that we're doing it for your kingdom and for your glory, Lord God, and not just for our own selves. I pray, Heavenly Father, for the presenter, give him the grace and the words to speak uh, elegantly with us, Lord Father. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide this session. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Friedrich. I think, can I welcome the speaker now? Is he on, uh, Ayanda? Hey, not yet. He's joining just now. Um, but maybe okay. if ever there are any questions from anybody uh, that they have, uh, we can take this moment because there will be no further questions because of the time tonight in terms okay. of any of our logistics. So if anyone has a question administratively, whatever, uh, around the seminars, yes. please do put up your hand now uh, one announcement from me um who's ajym is it the buzzer yes oh <laughs> okay um okay we'd right. like to welcome the pastor then to yeah just give, you you'll do that now just give me a second okay. let me change his name uh, all right, so the um, there are two seminars that um, we are cancelling. One is um, creative instruction. Which is new on the new curriculum. It's not in the old curriculum. And um, we do not have the content for that seminar as yet. It's not included in the manual. So we don't want to come up with our own things. So we will do it when the content is available for that. Uh, you see, the reason I mute everybody is because people like to unmute themselves. Eh? Uh, uh, Tawanda, please make the pasta. Uh, you even muted me now <laughs> all right so those two seminars that seminar we have cancelled because we don't have content for it uh, we got a letter from the union that it will be updated eventually and until then um we have we have removed it from our side um, so it will not disadvantage anyone in terms of investiture. It's not any candidate's fault. The other seminar that I took out is the communication seminar, which um, I was supposed to present. We, If we have time later, we might choose a slot on one of the days or Sabbaths or Sabbaths afternoon, and we do it otherwise failing which you're welcome to go to YouTube and you watch it on YouTube because communication is one of our biggest failures in the junior youth ministry. Um, it is It was important for us to actually go through it, but due to time constraints, 
um, I had thought that I would be able to put it on one of the days as two seminars, but it's impossible with the way seminars have been going. So that is it from my side. Remember to sign into the form and update your reflections accordingly. Millicent, back to you. You may introduce and welcome uh, the pastor. Or should I introduce okay. him and you welcome him? Uh, you can do it, Rihanna. It's fine. You're on the floor. Go ahead. Go ahead, Melissa. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining us again. We'd like to welcome Pastor Stanley Rambau from the Junior Youth Ministry Director, TOC. We're happy to have a guest speaker with us. And we're glad that, unfortunately, we're starting now, but I'm sure he will give you all the attention and he's doing child and youth evangelism. Thank you. Over to you, Pastor. Thank you very much, uh, Millicent. Welcome, Fundisi, to, to our conference. We're waiting for you and we're singing. Uh, if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. And uh, we're also singing oh, when the saints go marching in until you came because we're taught we wait for the pastor with a song but <laughs> we are happy you are here <laughs> uh powerful thank you so much uh, good evening everyone i'm hearing some noise i don't know okay no thank you so much uh, everyone for the warm welcome as I was I communicated with you earlier that I had an ad hoc meeting at seven. So I was still trying to persuade the saints to allow me to be here. So we thank God for them that they've finally agreed. That's why I'm here tonight. We are talking about child and youth evangelism. What do you think when we talk about child and youth evangelism? What comes to your mind? when we talk about child and youth evangelism. What, what happened? I'm trying to share. It says share window closed. There's a, there's a hand up for punk. Bongi, maybe he wants to actually answer you, Pastor. Okay, Bongi. You can try to share yeah. again, Fundis. Yes, thanks, Pastor. I think for me, what comes to mind is leading the children and the youth to Christ. Thank you. You are saying in the presentation is what leading children uh, child to Christ. I think he was responding to your question. Oh, okay. I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to share here. It seems I can I can share. Do you have any idea? He just kicked me out and said I can't share. Am I not given rights to share? You have every right to share from this. Try again. Okay. Uh, I'm trying. Are you seeing my screen? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Okay, let's do this. Are you sharing? Yes, I'm trying to share. There you go. 
and then thank you yes we are talking about the child and youth evangelism the question might be why child and youth evangelism why do we need to invest so much energy and time on on children and youth why do we have to persuade the young people to come to Christ? Why do we have to persuade the adventurers and pathfinders um, to Christ? What if when they grow up, they don't even choose our God? Because that is uh, possible that we can teach these adventurers and these pathfinders. But when they reach the age of 16, when they go to, to universities at the age of 18, 17, they, they might, some of them, they don't even choose uh, these, um, these same Jesus that we are presenting. Why then, as a church, should we spend our energy and time trying to persuade them? So we have to understand that the mission of this church, of a Christian church, is evangelism. Without evangelism, there's nothing that we can do. Without evangelism, we, we cease it to be a church. The Christian church was born out of mission for mission. It was born out of mission. John the Baptist preached the gospel. Jesus himself, when he came, he preached the gospel. It's where we find the birth of Christianity as they were busy uh, evangelism. Even when he was about to ascend, he even gave a command of that we must go out there and do evangelism. Go he therefore and make disciples of our all nation. He did not say go there and do other things, but the core business was that of evangelism. The core business was that of persuading people to come to Christ. We need to understand that when we forget about the mission, when we forget about our aim, why do we exist as a Christian church? Why do we uh, uh, exist as the Adventist youth? We cease to be the, the a church of God. We we see this to be a Christian church. I see a lot of churches out there. They push more of healing. They push more of other things than evangelism. But evangelism is the best and the weapon that Christ has given unto us so that we go and the mission that Christ has given us to go out there in the world and preach this gospel to, to the people. So when we forget that, we, we, we stop existing to be the youth. The definition that I'm going to use for tonight, definition for child and youth uh, uh, evangelism, persuasively presenting the gospel of Jesus that people are led to become his disciple. So we persuade these people. Remember when you persuade, it does not mean it's a one day thing. Sometimes as pathfinders, sometimes as Adventist ministry, we love going and march in the, in the street and we hand over pamphlet. And then after that, we forget about the mission, the seed that we have planted. But when we need to be persuasive in our, 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 our dealing, when we, are, we want to uh, present this Christ to, to our young people and to the constituency out there, we need to be persuasive. It's like when you are selling a product, you don't just come and say, hey, I'm selling this phone. You need to be persuasive to say this phone can do this and this and this, the camera is better than that. You need to be in order for a person to buy that particular product. Even when it comes to evangelism, we need to persuade. We need to persuasively presenting the gospel of Jesus that people are led to become uh, disciples. <laughs> Definition number two, taking advantage of opportunities to share what you know about Jesus Christ. 
So here we are saying, you take the opportunity, opportunities, they always avail themselves that we present Christ to, to the people. When COVID came, uh, some of us did not see any opportunity, but this was our opportunity as Christian to talk more about God and strengthen more our uh, the people about with the word of God and tell them that Jesus is there. Jesus care for them. Sometimes we we run, we hide, and say, Ah, no, we we can't do this. There's Corona. There's pandemic. But if we, 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 we love this thing one that we are doing evangelism. We should have found something to say. We should have found the opportunities that this is the right time that we continue as young people to preach the gospel. Because this gospel, we need to preach it in season and out of season. We should see opportunities. Um, even when 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 economy is down, we should see. Even when there's a pandemic, we must be able to see these opportunities, and we strike. We give people the word of God. People are thirsty. People are hungry. People are hopeless, and Christ is the only hope that we have. We have. So youth evangelism is the work of the church. Remember we said the church, this church is born out of mission, for mission. So the youth evangelism is the work of the church. It's not an individual work. It's not Pastor Rambau's work. It's not Pastor Velas's work. But this is our work. It's the work of the church. So we cannot do much out without working with the church. So it's youth evangelism is the work of the church. So it's the work, as we say, work of the church for the church. It's not our personal work. It's the work of, 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 of the church for the church with the church. We cannot work apart. We cannot say we are young people. We are going to do our own thing without the church. We need to involve the church because this is the work for the church. The church was born for this mission. The church was born to spread the gospel. The church was born out of mission for mission. So when we say go ye, uh, uh, go ye therefore, this is the is the is the is the is the commission that is given to the church so we cannot do much outside the church we need to push the 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 the, the message the the gospel with the church and we are what are we saying and by young people by and by young people we know that our old folks these days they are complaining of the needs and that we have the energy we have the power to go and spread this gospel as young people because this is the work that should be done by young people this is the work must be done by all the region of the NCSA. This is the work of the uh, of the of the young people that must be done by both the junior and the uh, and the and the senior YCOM to spread the gospel to be the forerunners of this gospel to go and tell people the good news. When I I read the history of evangelism of the good news of 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 taking back the good news, these terms are. Uh, military, uh, I was told that these terms are military terms, that when, when in the olden days, when the two nations are fighting, and when they are there by the battlefield, there will be somebody at a distance watching the, what is happening. This person is waiting for this nation where he come from to be, uh, when it's winning, and when he sees that the, 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 the enemies are defeated, this person is the bearer of the good news. We will, with this person we will run to go and tell his nation that we have won, we have conquered. That could not be done by the old man, but that could only be done by young people who have the energy to go 
and spread and tell the whole village that we have won. This is the good news. So that's why we are saying here, evangelism is the work by, of the church by young people. These young people, they must stand up and run and preach the, the gospel. Our objective to create an awareness of the scope of children and youth evangelism in and in so doing, emphasize the importance of an evangelistic approach to adventurer pathfinder youth ministry. As from the youth ministry, we cannot present this gospel as raw as it is. We need to repackage it so that it can be palatable to our young people, to the adventurers, to the pathfinders, to the young adults, to the ambassadors, to our people out there. We have to repackage it. Yes, it's an old man. We cannot present the old men with the same jacket. We need to put a new jacket on this old man so that this gospel, it reaches the intended constituent, the intended um, constituency. So by doing, we need to repackage. So the gospel that we take to our old people, it cannot be the same gospel that we, 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 we take raw as it is to the young people. In 2022, the gospel of 19 of 1950 cannot be presented the same way we are presenting it also in 2022. We need to repackage. We need to make it beautiful. We may we need to make it in a way that our young people are able to accept this gospel. Our young, our old people, they all, some of them, they took the gospel. When I hear the history of Solusi University, that when Adventists were baptized there, they, some of them, they said, we didn't even hear what the white people, they were saying. But because we saw a white man sweating, we just accepted the gospel. It cannot be the same even in 2022. We need to repackage it. Young people must understand um, this gospel. Am I not alone, Ine? You are still there. Yes, Pastor, I stole you. Oh, okay. Because this uh, Zoom thing, sometimes you will talk alone and there's no one. Purpose of youth and child evangelism to lead young people into saving relationship with Jesus Christ and help them embrace his call to discipleship. That is the purpose. We are saying we need to lead these young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes because we become careless and we do not repackage the gospel, that's why our young people at some times they leave the church. But we must make sure that when we do this evangelism, we make sure that we, we package this gospel in such a way, even when they choose their religion, when they are of age, they know that how am my base, where I, the foundation was laid here by the Adventist Youth Ministries. It was laid here and this relationship is a solid relationship with Jesus Christ and help them embrace his call to, to discipleship. We work with them, we talk to them, we play with them so that they see this Christ and make a discipleship. When we make discipleship, a discipleship is a follower. We don't have to be calling them every time to go to church. We don't have to remind them about uh, uh, that lying scene. We don't have to remind them that, hey, you need to go to church because they have been made disciples. They, they must be able to make their wise choices of choosing Christ on their own. They must be able, they must be able to go to church without being reminded when we are disciples, when we have made them disciples, they do, they make their own personal choices. Our call does not end just in telling them that Jesus is love. Our call does not end by saying, ah, Jesus loves you. But our call says, go and make these people disciples when they leave 
for adventurers, they go to Pathfinder, they don't leave the church. Therefore, the AY, the Adventist Youth Clubs, are not mere recreational, educational, or training centers, but vehicle to implement evangelistic agenda. This is what I tell um, uh, my, my constituency that um, the pathfinders and adventurers are not Adventist because they never raised their hands in their local churches and they chose your, your God. So these are like regular visitors. These are like your, your visitors in the church. So you must do the best as the church to look for their interest, to invest on them. Because these guys, if you treat them well, because they are unentered area, because they are non-Adventists. These guys, when they, are, they reach 16, 18, they must go to universities. They must be baptized. They must choose the Christ that we have taught them. So our, they are not, we are not just there to play with kids. That's why I normally refuse to say, don't, don't say we were looking for somebody to play with kids. We are not playing because we have duties to, 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 to put Christ in these children. And so that when they are of age, they are able to choose the God of this church. Matthew 28, we know the verse, all of us by now, I hope. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the, uh, and of the Holy Ghost. All the powers, he's saying, all the powers has been given to me. All the power, with the same power, I am sending you that go and make and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, make them disciples with the power that comes God. So you cannot do evangelism without the connection with Jesus Christ. So the first stop is where we need to have a relationship we need to have a relationship with Christ. So when we have the relationship, we claim the power. And when we have been given the power, it's easy for us to go out there and, and, and make disciples and teach all these people so that we baptize them as, as time goes on. We make sure that they become disciples. We cannot do it without Christ. So Christ can help us to achieve this goal as young people. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I am with you. Remember this, the person who say, I've been given the power, all the power on earth is, and also in heaven has been given to me. And this past, same person is saying, this same Jesus is saying to us, I am with you. You are not going alone as the young people, but you are going with God himself. What Jesus has, has begun, we must continue. The work of evangelism. He preached the gospel. So we have to take it and continue with the gospel until he comes. There's no retirement when we talk about evangelism. There is no time we say we are taking a break. We work 24 hours if it means we should do so. Because our work is to spread the gospel. Basic adventure pathfinder philosophy and requires that help the youth to understand that the church loves them, cares for them, and appreciates them. As we are master guides, some master guide in training and the leaders of the church, what we need to do is to help these young people to understand that as the seven day Adventists, we love them. And when they understand and they see that love 
from us as the leaders of the church, they will understand that we also love them as, as the members, as the leaders, and we care for them. Sometimes when we do our evangelism, we don't care much about the needs of our young people. We are going to somebody who, who have dropped out from school because they did not have uh, school fees. And we are going there telling them Jesus loved them. Do we understood? Did we show our care? Our young people, they are dating. We are going to somebody who is bro heartbroken because a boyfriend says, ah, no, let's end here. Do we care? Do we, do we want to know them before we can present this Christ? Yes, we have pathfinders. Do we take our time to go to them to understand them before we can say, yeah, Jesus can love you? Before we can say, we love you? Before we can say, we can, these, these pathfinders and adventurers, our young adults and uh, all the, 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 the members of, this, uh, of the Adventist youth, they must see us caring for them. They must see us loving them. They must not hear us loving them. Saying, I love you is so simple. But we must go to an extent where our young people, they see the love, they see the caring. They see where they are carrying burdens, they are stressed, these young people, they are depressed. We must be there to carry their burdens so that they understand when we say the love, uh, the church uh, understand them and loves them and cares for them and appreciate them. Many a times we don't appreciate our young people. We normally correct them only when they are wrong. But when they do things right, we don't appreciate them that are ah, well done, you have done good. So that when they do things wrong, we are able to go to them and say, hey man, you have missed it here. Yeah. Can we uh, 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 fix it? But every time when they are wrong, our young people, we scold them, we give them all kinds of advice that which we never gave them when they are doing the right thing. Train and organize the youth for active service. Teach them that evangelism to others is not a once a week or once a month, but a daily way of life. Evangelism must be a lifestyle, not a program. Not that Pastor Ndaba must organize an evangelism day, a conference-wide evangelism day, and then we go out there and we stop. Evangelism, it must be a lifestyle. We must evangelize. That is the ten new term knowledge that we have learned of late, that we must be, we must evangelize. We must be the sermon. People are tired of hearing sermons. People, they want to see. People, they, they, they want to, to, to feel this God we are talking about. So we must evangelize the gospel that we are preaching. You cannot go and preach when you are hopeless yourself. So you must bring hope to our young people. <laughs> they must always see that hope. They must see, always see you right, even though you know at the back things are not okay. But because you worship a powerful God that you want to present to our young people. So we are saying, go and, 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 and have that connection with God. Present that God to them so that they see that indeed you have a powerful God. So we are organizing the youth for active service. They must work for other people. When we recruit 20 pathfinders today, those 20 pathfinders, they must know that they are not here just to learn honors. They are not here just for camping and drill and marching. But they must know that our job here is go and look for other young people who are lost. They must find the path. And we as the master guides, because we are masters, we must make sure that we lead them because we already know the path. We must find this path with them. We must, we must guide them as leaders.
So Seven Day Adventist Church program of action is to win, train, hold, and reclaim its children and youth and engage them in service of their peers. When we have won, when we have gone out there, when we have beaten our drums, when we have our drum squad there, and we find the children coming to us, we need not to just say, ah, they came and they will go again. We just have to catch them as they follow the noises of the drums, as they follow the beautiful uniform, as they follow and their peers. To, to, to see where are they going to end we end going to church and sometimes we don't even care for them we need to care for those who follow us as we do our public campaigns and train them we have they have come we have warned them so we need to train them we need to hold them and we need to go and reclaim those who seem to be going back so it's children and youth engage them in service for their peers the same people that you have caught their attention, the same people you have won, the same people you have trained, the same people you have hold are the same people you are saying now, the 10 of you, the 20 of you, you need to go out there and find your peers and bring them into the fold. Because out there is not safe, but here where we are is more safer. And when they come, let them find a safe environment where there is no abuse, where there are no, uh, there's no bullying, where there are no other things that will make them to go back. Let them find Christ. Let them find Christian leaders who will um, appreciate them in spite of the background, in spite of the color, in spite of wherever they come from. We need to, 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 to hold them within our, our cross. Second Timothy 4, verse 5. But watch thou in all things and your affliction. Do the work of evangelism evangelism. Make full proof of the mean of thy ministry. But watch thou in all things. Watch. And your afflictions, they will be there. Challenges, they will be there. But even though you are facing this thing, the Bible says, do the work of evangelism. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. What is your ministry as you are coming to the junior youth ministry? All of us, we cannot be drum instructors. All of us, we cannot be drill instructors. All of us, we cannot be uh, face aiders. In the way we must find our corner in the ministry that will enable your ministry to be of evangelism. Find your corner. In the TOC, we have so many master guides. Some they do everything. When you say drill and match in the person is there, when you talk about drums, the same person is there. This person is the jack of all trade, but most of them they are masters of none. So we have to improve also our skills within the Adventist youth ministries. So we are reminded that we must make full proof of this ministry. Five truths about child and youth evangelism. Ephesians 6 verse 4. Fathers, don't make your children bitter about life. Instead, bring them up in a Christian discipline and instruction. Fathers, don't make your, ch children, your children bitter. And somebody, some, some, some children, when I went to another church, they were saying, ah, Mfundis, when we read this verse, our parents, they don't get to verse 4. They end up there where it says we must um, honor our parents. And, uh, and it ends there. We don't come to this verse. Our fathers, our parents, they, they are making us bitter. They buy us a cell phone and they, they tell us, don't go with, you must switch it off uh, in the church. And when we are in the church, they, the same parent calls you. And then when you, you don't answer it, the same person comes and scolds you to say, why were you not answering your phone? 
And when you answer the phone, why are you answering the phone while you are in church? So this uh, group of young people, they are saying, our parents, they make us bitter and angry. So as leaders, let's not make our children bitter about life. Instead, let's bring them up in a Christian discipline and instruction. We have the tools in the Adventist youth ministry that you, we can instill the discipline and the, and the Christian instruction. It is a divine expectation and imperative for us to do so. Number two. When Jesus told the disciple not to forbid the children to come to him, he was speaking to all his followers in all ages, to officers of the church, to ministers, to helpers, and all Christians. Jesus is drawing the children, and he bids us, suffer them to come to me, as if they will say, they will come if you do not hinder them. So some of them, they cannot come. We have children that were forced to come to church. I was telling my, 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 my master guide that remember the children that we have, some of them we have threatened them to come to church because we as parents, we have told them that if you don't come to church, we will see where you are going to sleep. We have threatened them to say, if you don't come to church, there's no lunch for you. If you don't come to church, see yourself where you are going to stay the whole day because I'm closing, I'm locking my house. And these children, they end up coming. But when Jesus says, hey, man, for, not to forbid the children to come to him, as if, if we don't say go, they will just come on their own. They won't, some of them. But our duty is to go there. We will make sure that they come to church. Let's make sure that they come to Christ. It is our moral duty to them, ourselves, and Christ, to bring them. It's our moral duty to bring these children and our young people to Christ. It is our duty. So when we slumber on duty, we don't have anything to do. I normally tell them that uh, sometimes you just need to go back and drink and again because your duty as a master guide, your duty as a Christian leader is to make, to make sure that our young people, they are safe. Our young people, we go and, and fetch them wherever they are. We talk about children who died at the tavern, 21 or 22 of them who died in the tavern, imagine as Christian, if we can go and talk to our young people so that they can come to the fold, we go and fetch them, we go and persuade them that this is the right way. Today, we could have been talking another language that the young people have been saved. Exodus 10, verse 9. And Moses said, we will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our heads, for we are to keep feast to the Lord. We cannot leave our young. We cannot leave our sons and daughters. As we come to Christ, as we come closer to Christ, we need to bring our young people we need to bring our daughters. We need to bring our sons with us for is the feast of the Lord. We need to bring them closer to God. And where are our young people? Some of us, some of us may say, ah, oh, we are not parents, but the young people in our community, we need to bring them to Christ as we go to Christ. It is our moral duty to them, ourselves, and Christ, that we cannot just go to church every Sabbath, every day. We are leaving our young people in our community, in our neighborhood, that we cannot even tell them about this Christ, that let's go to church one day.
Malachi 4, verse 6. You will change parents' attitude towards their children and children' attitude towards their parents. If not, I will come and reclaim the land by destroying it. We need to build relationship between the parents and the young. We need to bring to, to, to build that relationship so that these ones they don't fight on their own. So that these ones they 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 they, they, they how can I put it? This one they work together. So we don't want to see a situation, these people, they work in the opposite direction. But we want to find our young people working together. We don't want to see a situation to see young people, they don't want to work with adults. They don't want any relation with adults, but they only want to work with other young people. So we need a situation when we have the relation. In the near future, many children will be endured with the Spirit of God and will do a work in proclaiming the truth to the world that at that time cannot well be done by older members of the church. Counsels to Teachers, page 1667 to 167. 166 to 167. So that is a counsel by Ellen White. She say, she's saying to us, in the near future, many children will be endured with the spirit of God. And where are those young people? These are it's the youth of the Trans Orange Conference. This is the youth of the NCSA. These are the youth of KNFC. This is the youth of the KNFC. This is the Adventist youth also are included here. These young people, they will endure with the spirit of God and they will do a work in proclaiming the truth to the world. This, we are not talking about other people who are not yet born, but we are the instrument that God wants to use. We are the instrument that we must go out there and do the work of, the, of, of, of God. And we are told that this work, all the members of the church cannot do. So even the older folks, they cannot do it. And we as the young people, we are saying also, we cannot do it. Then who will do it? There's no one who will do it. So the burden is ours that we run and do the work. It is a fulfilling a prophecy. We are the young people. We are the right people. We are saying, uh, I will go. We are saying, I will go. It's us who must go. We are not saying to somebody, hey, you will go. We are saying, I will go. It started with us, all of us who are here, 133 of uh, young people, we must go. Second King 5, chapter 2. And the Syrian had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on now months of end. Verse 3 says, and she said unto her mistress, would God, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is Samaria, for the for he will recover him of his leprosy. This is the young person. This is a legal child. This is a little maid in a foreign land. He's saying he's standing, saying, "Hey man, if this this guy, this master of mine, if he can go to Israel, I tell I'm telling you, he will be healed." He is a young girl in a foreign land. I, I, because they were not, she was not only one captured, and others were captured also and taken to the land of Syria. I, 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 with my own my imagination, I feel that there were also older people who were captured, and by this young girl, she's the only one who was brave enough to go and tell the king to say, "Hey, man, there is a God in that side who can heal." And allow me to tell you, this girl, she has not seen anyone being healed of, of leprosy. She has seen people dying. She has seen 
people being buried. She have seen people smelling because of leprosy. She have seen people, uh, their fingers falling because of leprosy. She has seen, uh, seen people's skin damaged because of leprosy. But she has not seen any prophet healing leprosy. But she gathered herself and faith in God. She says to the master that if this, this man goes to Israel and be with the prophet there, this man will be healed. Our young people are courageous. They need to be supported. We are courageous as young people. We need to go out there and tell our people, the dying world, what our older folks could not do. Like this little girl. It is a demanding, dynamic, and double in effect. Imagine this little girl challenging the God of Assyria. So this which was saying, uh, your God is not powerful, but my God is powerful. Your God has failed to heal you. Now I'm telling you about the God. But the Naaman could have contented and say, how can you tell me about your God? Because I, I have conquered you. You are here because of the gods of Assyria. But this girl, she was not there to entertain such. She was there to pass the message. Well-fed sheep don't stray. If our young people are well-trained, are well-fed, they will never go astray. That is what we are saying. Well-fed sheep don't go astray. It is our duty to feed them. Scope of sin, specific evangelist strategy, methodology concept in context of adventure and pathfinder clubs. So I think this one is now another uh, presentation that I won't go into leading a child to Christ. How to lead a child to Christ. I won't be doing that. But there's a quotation that I want us to go to. Yeah, this is the quotation, though it's a little bit uh, blurry. It says, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingles with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them to follow him or follow me. That is Ellen White in the book, Ministry of Healing, page 143. So we can come with all the method. We can come with everything, but we have to remember it Christ's method alone that will make us to reach the people who have success. Let's not forget all the method that we may come. We must know that Christ's method alone is the one that will work better for us. He mingles with men as one who desires their good. We need to go and mingle with our young people. We need to go and mingle with those whom we want them to save. We cannot want people to be saved when we are far away from them. We cannot WhatsApp them. We cannot Bluetooth them. But we need to be in their midst. We need to see their needs. We need to address their needs. Then we may simply say to them, follow me and they will follow. May the good Lord bless you. I think I will end here for tonight. Ayanda, over to you now. Take a few questions, ma'am. Um, due to that, we did not give them opportunity. Any questions? Guys?
Doesn't seem this question. Okay, yes, Tina. I think I saw Tina on a question. Go ahead, Tina. And Virginia's iPhone. Okay. Um, my question is uh, on the, when you are teaching the kids, for instance, this is the child who has been um, from adventures to Pathfinder and they're doing the last class of Pathfinder. And then they ask you a question to say, uh, what, what is the whole purpose of us having, belonging to this club? And apparently, according to them, they, are, they were forced by the, the parents to be in the club. And also, in addition to that, they have questions in the existence of God. How exactly can you deal with such a situation? Pastor, have you got an answer for the question? Yeah, I, might not be, I might not have the exact answer. As I said earlier, that our children, some of our children, they've been forced to come to church. And now since they've been forced, it's up to us at, as leaders that they love our ministry, that they love this ministry. Let's present it to them in such a way they understand it. Yes, they will question the existence of God. You need to, to explain, you need to sit down with them and explain the existence of God to them. You, that's why I said sometimes you need to have a relationship with them in order for them to sit and explain this thing. You cannot just do it as a mere, mere teacher to say, I'm teaching a guide. You need to be close to them. You need to be their friends. And when they ask such questions, you are able to answer them in such a way that they understand. Sometimes because I am a pastor, they might not even take the answer that I'm giving them because I don't have a relation with them. But let's have a relation with them. They will enjoy the ministry. Well, let's not our duty be that of teaching and that's all. Let's go home. Let's sometimes, let's have a beginning with them so that we form a bond so that they love the ministry. Thank you. I don't know if Virginia, I am satisfied. Virginia, you had a question? Go ahead, Virginia. Then we had another end from this. Sara, Sara, please. And Pastor, they, there's a lot of say thank you. It's a powerful, powerful presentation. Mm, thank you. Please raise your hand and speak if you need to speak. I wonder they say they muted. Can you please unmute the people that need to speak, please? Hi, Pastor. I... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hi, Pastor. Thanks for the presentation. I think what we as parents should do is um, encourage the children and and empower them to a point where they feel they belong, where they, where it is a joyous occasion to go to church and be able to do the work. We should be at, at this point in time in, in where they love, they should encourage us. They can't wait for Sabbath. When are we going to do this and do that? We don't have that passion in them yet. And we need to instill this passion so that 
they can get the job done. Thank you, yes. That's correct, that's true. Hello. You've got another two hands, please speak. Hello, it's Vatsira. Hey, this muting and unmuting is a little dangerous for us because it, we, we spend a lot of time trying to unmute and then we end up not even talking. Yeah, uh, thank you, Pastor, for the wonderful presentation. But I've got one, like two issues that I want us to like think uh, about at the moment because you say that we need to be very persuasive when we are dealing with our children or even with adults. But I'm just thinking that is it really for us to be persuasive or we just need to present the facts as they are and the Holy Spirit will take over from there. That's what I was thinking because a straight message can be very powerful. If we just say what God wants us to say or what God wants us to do, then the rest, the Holy Spirit will do. That's one. Then the second one is on the issue of the children that come to church because maybe they've been forced by the parents. I'm thinking also deeply enough to say certain things I think we need to be very firm with our children. If we're going to give them that liberty to just make their only choice. They are still young, they need to be directed. But however, I also agree to the fact that we must make it very enticing to our children. We must make it appetizing so that they can also want to be part of it. That's, those are my two points. Okay, no, thank you so much on those two points. As I said, it would be persuasive. Uh, and we said Jesus' method alone will yield the success. So persuading is not telling about or forcing them to, to come to Christ. We, ma we can mingle with them, understand their needs, bit by bit int introduce this Christ. But we cannot just go into them and say, hey, Christ love you, come to church. And we say, we have done the work, they will come. They might not come. But sometimes we need to go to them, check on them, being with them. And when they see that, ah, this guy is persuasive, this guy is so is busy coming to me, he has my interest, he, it seems he loves me, the love that I'm not even getting at home. Why don't I just follow him to his church or her to her church? When we talk also about the, that these kids, we force them to come to church. So, so at some point, it's a reality. But we cannot bring them to a boring church and boring ministry and just put them there and we don't care about them. So when we bring them to church, when we force them to church, let's may also make sure that there is something that keeps them in the church. We cannot bring them to church only to be playing the whole day, to say, I'll go and play outside. Because the adults are having services inside. We need to bring to make something for them that they will enjoy, even though they are visitors, though, even though we have forced them. Thank you so much. There's still two hands. Can the guys please speak? I wonder whose hands is there? Uh, it's, it's, me no it's no Yolo Millicent. Sorry. Please speak. Please speak. Oh, yes. Um, Mfundis. My question is on the, the issue of, um, we, we, let me just give you a brief background. We had VPX, we invited some kids um, to VPX. So after VPX, now we tried to make some follow-ups. How do you make a follow-up on, on, on the children who, was, who were coming to VPX? Because now we kind of feel that the VPX was convenient for parents so that we can take their kids away from them. But now after VPX, they are just refusing for their kids to come to church when we try to make some follow-ups. How can you how can we make follow-ups effectively to the children who were coming to VPX? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, during the time of VPX, 
Did you try to make relations with the parents of those children to understand the ministry that you are in, the ministry that you are doing? Because sometimes we need to explain to the parents and we need to also to explain to them that we don't have only VPX. We have this other ministry called uh, Pathfinder. We have also this ministry called Adventurer. And this is what we normally do every weekend. We must not just be the one-time thing of saying VPX and then we visit the parents once, but let's form a relation, a relationship with the parents of those children. Uh, when they graduate for VP, I don't know if you have in, uh, invited them. You could have done some, some invitation card and sent them to, to them to say you are invited for your child uh, graduation. And you make it as powerful so that the parents, they see, to say, wow, this church is so organized. This church has powerful programs. And when they come on graduation, you introduce this pathfinder, you introduce your adventurers to say, these are other programs that we have. This program called Pathfinder, it runs throughout the year, even the adventurer one. If you like your children to be part of us, this is what we do. And you show them videos, you show them uh, uh, photos of what you do in the Pathfinder ministry. Not all of them, they can say, no, we, we just wanted them to do VBX. They will agree to say, no, it's fine. You can come and fetch them on Saturdays or on Sundays when you have your, your, your trainings. Thank you. Any other questions? Before I give over to Ayanda. Ayanda seems it's finished now. You can actually do your vote of things. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Mfundisi. Um, uh, if, if, if I was at church, I would be singing, we love your story, yes, we do, we thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate you making time for us and then uh, giving us this um, informative presentation for, for tonight. I think one of the biggest challenges that we have as leaders is to actually drive our children towards making that decision to commit to Christ and to have Christ as their personal savior and not just to be part of this junior youth ministry as one of the programs of the church, but as a means towards their redemption and salvation. That at the end of the day, when we say we are successful, we say we have been successful because we managed and were able to drive our children towards making that decision to say we accept or they accept Christ as their personal savior. I think this is one of the key presentations that are key to us understanding our core mission and um, and mission and core mission and core objective as leaders within this junior youth ministry. And Patisani agrees with that. And he says, it not only starts at the church, but also it must be from home as well to balance with that. So thank you very much. And uh, Mem Millicent, thank you so much a diligent um, a soldier in this junior youth ministry, one who does not sleep uh, in battle. Um, so thank you very much for all your engagements and follow-ups and, um, and engagements in preparing the pastor uh, for our seminar for today. We appreciate that. Uh, may you continue to do your good work. And to everybody, thank you so much. Uh, there are questions that are now coming to the DM um, about the, the clips. The, the technical team has started uploading the, um, the seminars on YouTube. Um, you can go and check if the one you are looking for is already there. If not, uh, they, they, they are definitely being uploaded. So some have already been uploaded. Um, so we can go to YouTube. Our YouTube channel is called, for those who do not know, shame on you. Shame, shame on you. 
but nonetheless, let me help you. Um, it is the <laughs> junior youths. Are we together? It's the NCSA junior youths. NCSA junior youths. Maybe let me give you. Um, uh, should I give you a link for this? Is it necessary, even, Mark? Because you have most access to this. Yes, thing. it is necessary. It is necessary. Hey, working with adults is a problem. All right. So let me take a link for you, uh, YouTube, and then I'm going to paste it uh, so that we can all be able to junior youth NCSA. Okay. There you go. All right, I'm posting in the chat. Uh, that's our YouTube channel. There you go. I've posted it so you can go to our channel. There's quite a lot there. There are some of the seminars that we had last year as well. Remember, we also started a new curriculum. So there are some, uh, some changes and improvements on our seminars between this year and last year. So it will also be of benefit to those who missed the ones last year. Take your time to go through them. In particular, the communications one um, um, that we had last year, um, because we may not be able to do it due to the limited days that we have. All right. Otherwise, from my side, thank you very much. Remember the form. Tawanda, did you post the form? Um, remember to fill out the reflection form and that you update your reflection for the day uh, for each of the seminars that you attend. You must update the, the, the reflection form. Fill in your name in the chat to make sure that your name is written in the book of life so that when we are having, um, what do you call this thing? When we are having certificates, we can remember you um, and that you may also reward, be rewarded of your, of your attendance in these seminars. All right, so that is it from my side. Um, so I think due to time, Millicent, we may close our seminars. Thank you very much. Thank I'd like to thank. Ayanda, for all his hard work as well, trying to get all the IT and things resolved. And we'll just ask the pastor to please close to us in prayer. Is he still on Ayanda? Then he can close to us in prayer, please. Uh, let's pray. Our gracious and loving Father, our God, right in heaven. We thank you, Lord, in a special way for allowing us as leaders to congregate here in this fashion. Father God, we thank you, Father God, of the use of technology. You know the glitches and challenges that we could have encountered, but you made this session to be smooth. We thank you, Father, for being part of us as we empower our leaders so that they, are, they can go and serve. Father God, it was a iron sharpening iron. Even the presenter, even the leaders who have done Master God way, revived and they have new ideas that they can go and share. The new zeal of evangelism was born. We are asking that, Father God, you continue to give us the strength. You give, continue to give us uh, fresh ideas so that we may able to reach our young people. Father God, now we are about to retire. We are asking that, Father God, you give us a good night rest. Be with the leaders in the NCSA, the leaders of the young people, the director. Be with them so that they continue to work for the salvation of our young people. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, thank you, Pastor. Good night, everybody, and thank you for joining. Tomorrow night, same time at 6 